unified device management. I was going to pick on someone specifically. So I won't stay too focused on the emerging trends, but pretty much everyone wants to connect via their iPad. Everyone wants to connect via their mobile phone. Why you want to manage servers from your mobile phone, I still don't know, but people want to do it. People get really, really, they kind of go, I want to manage my server from my mobile. Why? There's a big screen right beside you, you know? Well, I'll transmit from the screen on my phone to the big screen over here, and I'll manage it, and I'll just do this. Seriously, I have better things to do in my life than doing that type of stuff. Anyway, people want to do it, so let's, let's, let's see what we can do. People want to have apps on their phone to access information anytime, anywhere. How many different, fa how many different phones and mobile devices do you have, and you have Facebook on all of them? Guaranteed. Or it has inbuilt integration in Facebook so you can get your notifications of when someone's on the toilet. <laughs> anyway, you heard the other day um, the numbers from Microsoft, uh, the declining PC market, and then we had a record here. Fantastic. The, the, the idea, anyway, is that people are going away from full fat desktops. They want to get, they want to carry these devices around. You can see yourself in terms of the form factor of the devices. Like you have a little small Asus tablet there. I have a relatively mobile uh, PC that I can carry around. That's only a couple of pounds, and it's and it's great. Guys have slates. Guys have whatever. Yeah. Problem is, we have to manage these devices. How do we manage these devices? How do you get apps out to these devices? Suddenly. Uh, hang on a sec, we don't have bloody someone, we don't have any tools that will actually manage and deploy to a Windows RT device. Do we? Yeah, we do. Um, we don't have any tools that will manage and, and deploy out to a Mac. Macs are a nightmare to administer. I have one as well, so, that's, so, so, I, so I do know. Um, but uh, like an iPad, you want to get a device or an app to an iPad? How do you deploy an app to an iPad? All these challenges start to come, come along and you kind of, it all comes back down to this little thing here. Use end user experience. They don't. They don't care that it's going to take you like six and a half years to redevelop an application to sit on thing. They just want it on their iPad now. Six and a half years tough. You have about a day. Get going. Chop chop. <laughs> right? They don't care. Oh, I lost my iPad. Can you put the application on? Well, it took me a month to put it on in the first place. You know. Um, I don't care. I just want it on. Or the, you know the the, the pig ignorant uh, CEOs who just come in and just sit down and just go do it now. Give me money. No, just do it now. And you go, well, you kind of can need me money. I need to hire a whole team of developers for two years to redevelop the application. I don't care what it costs, get it done. Well, it's going to cost two million euros. No, you're not getting two million. I hopefully you get the point. What happens then? They kind of go, oh, well, I, got, I brought my Android device in today. Now I got my iPad. They, they confuse. Yeah. All these are challenges. All these are things that happen in an enterprise. All these things that people want. <coughs> so we've got Config Manager. And now we've got, with our latest wave of Intune, the ability to start managing a plethora of devices from multiple different vendors. What vendor? Blackberry. Sorry? Beware, Beware, Blackberry. Oh, Blackberry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 I, I don't know. I, so, so honestly, I don't know. So Bl BlackBerry, uh, part of the reason is BlackBerry have a really strange uh, encryption and security problem open to no one. They got kicked out of several countries a few months back because they wouldn't open up the actual, so th they, they, they control things. There is, like, like always, there is third-party utilities which you can plug in and it will do BlackBerry as well, but natively when inside the product, at this minute in time, what I, like, w no, not that I'm aware of, and I don't know if it's coming, if I'm brutally honest. We can find out, but... Um, not at this minute. But because no one, well, Blackberries are still, are they still alive? <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Dave, give him a new phone. <laughs> Hopefully, most people at least have these two phones, right? So Android or Apple, yeah? With look, people will have the mobile, devo the Windows mobile devices as well. Go on, show me who has a Windows mobile device. Be proud. <laughs> Two. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> point, anyway, so point is, is now you're opening up an, an entire range of an estate to be able to deploy apps from, or apps to corporate apps, not just Facebook, but corporate apps. Yammer. Yeah, why not? You know, um, to, to these particular devices. Mac OS is manage a Mac, deploy apps to a Mac. Would that be not cool? Because it's a pain. 
I like their DMG installer bits, but like, to be honest with you, having to go around and click and make sure it's installed on each machine just as a pain, I, I want to centralize management. Remember what I said earlier on? You want to develop your belly, you want to get bigger, so you need to be centralized and managing everything because you don't want to be leaving your desk and walking around. And one of the best things is there's Windows embedded and all these things that we can do. So now look, between all these bits and pieces now, we can start, you can, if you can get the package, we can deploy. Cab files, SIX, Citrix application scripts, AppFees, MSI installers, but more stuff, app, you know, like iOS, Android, OS X, all these bits and pieces to bring the fact that we can actually do unified device, device management and make your life easier all, all up. Would that be useful for an enterprise who is hell bent on bring your own device and really deserves a bit of a slap first, but um, the fact that we have no choice, uh, AOD or whatever you want to call it, is here, it's here to stay, people are going to have the moment and you have to figure out how to do it. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, the, the GPS. Let me check, because um, this is still relatively new in Terra's Pack 1, so I, haven't, I don't have an Intune subscription that's corporately enabled to be able to go and uh, figure out all this stuff in any kind of great depth or, or, or necessary at the minute. It's, uh, unfortunately, I spend most of my life traveling, so I don't get a lot of time. You'd think I'd get a lot of time, but I end up drinking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> anyway. So you get the point, we can deploy apps to lots of different devices and really bring into the fact that we can actually manage these, these non-corporate assets. Yes, sir. How easy is it to deploy? How easy is it? It's native to Service Pack 1. So, like, so, so, do you manage, so there's a website, there's, there, there's two or three websites which pretty much reference everything. And one of them is appdeploy.com, which has every form of the way you package something with Inside Config Manager. Right? Yeah, so so th these are the relative websites. They're they're really easy. The, the, I often found uh, app packaging a kind of a little bit of an art. You either have a great flair for it and do it really well, or you do it like I did, which was really pretty. So. Um, it was. In two thousand and seven, there was a lot of bits and pieces. In, well, no, in 2007 or two, yeah, it was, it was a few yeah, challenges. We're talking like, we're talking an engineer five days that he would have done. Yeah, I'd, well, in 2012, like, you're still going to have the same, you still have to go through the same designs and bits and pieces, but realistically, like, so, I, I know Kevin made the ad lib of being able to deploy all these products in five minutes. Uh, try not to install them in five minutes. So they, they will give you kind of, these things need to be designed properly, they need to be taught about, and they need to understand your integration paths and all the rest of it. So yeah, it's going to take time. I, like, there's no doubt, and you do need someone who drives it because it goes back to the people skills. That if the guy is not installing the product in the f in the first place, well then you're just going to get a bad taste in your mouth, and you're going to go Microsoft is crap. And honestly, no word of no word of a lie. These things take time. You take them in individual siloed products as much as they can integrate to each other, and they're all great when they work together. You have to take take a siloed approach because if you don't, it just becomes a nightmare, absolutely bloody nightmare. And especially when you get to the levels when you're talking about orchestration, that if the product hasn't been deployed right in the first place, it really becomes a pain because things don't synchronize correctly in, in a special app. But in terms of the application packages, it's an art. Uh, there's there's a guy in here, Ivan. If he, I've there. Ivan's very very good at this stuff. Um, I know a lot about Config Manager. I can make it do an awful lot of things that I don't want it to do. Um, but <laughs> so. <laughs> But no, I, like I, I've never like I've done a lot of app app packaging, and I I absolutely hate it with a vengeance, just because I don't like packaging apps. It's something that I just don't have a an interest in. I love orchestration, I love automation, I love scripting. That's where I kind of go into that type of stuff. Packaging, I I don't want to know most of the time. So here's what here's what happens. So you get a company store. So now you can deploy apps to your own individual company store where people can go in and click their app, sell service, install their own app, then get all your metering and tracking data to the same point. <coughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Rather than having to take your boss's phone each and every single time and actually install the bloody same things over and over again. As much as you want to then smart start kicking them and hitting them because he's making you go through the same pain again, now you're getting to a point of where 
you're deploying apps. So we have a little utility called Apps for Work on our Windows Mobile, and we can, do, we can download and connect via ADFS to all sorts of different services that are hosted on Azure, and then connect it back into our corporate infrastructure. So we use this in Anger. It's very good. We, I, I personally love it because I have a lot of tools which I use as, a, as an engineer, which gives me dispatches where I have to go uh, on a daily basis. So, and then I can log my time and do all the bits and pieces that I want on the phone and then just click Submit, and it's done. I don't have to think about it. And I can track my expenses too, which is always good. Um, so Intune Wave D is the integration, and this is how we start deploying out and managing these devices that can be connected anytime, anywhere. And there's a connector built into Service Pack 1, uh, which allows you, it's a connector role, which allows you then to, to use the Intune service and all its lovely bits and up as a distribution point, so then they can download the applications directly from Intune rather than having to connect back into your corporate estate. So you deploy your application to your distribution point, it gets copied up to Intune, packaged in a way, and then you revoke it and it's revoked in a couple of seconds. So the exact same way you would manage it in standard config manager stuff, but now you're actually using the power of a hosted cloud to be able to do it. So there's lots of just different things and I just want to skip on because I'm just conscious of time. But the point is, is that they can get to the devices with relatively, relatively straightforward. It's exceptionally well documented at this stage, believe it or not, one of our few things. Um, the only thing is you need an Intune subscription. There's things about Intune where if you're a partner, you can then do charge back to the, directly to the customer yourself and they, they'll, bill, they'll bill you so you make your you know, better margin and all that wonderful bits and pieces. So that's all sorted out. But the point is, see this last part about reporting back? It reports back to your assumption. So you run your reports directly from here and you get all that kind of, kind of compliance and asset information as you want. So you can do it. BYOD, fantastic. Just um, <coughs> in terms of Mac, there's just like a packaging up some of the Mac. And then we can also fantastically Linux and Unix. This will expand. Generally, we are very, very tight on our Linux support first. And then we start to, to roll out as we kind of understand the, the Linux estate a bit more. So you can see in Hyper-V, we support all sorts of wonderful stuff running on Hyper-V now. But it took us time to do it because we needed to understand the Linux kernel. In, in an exceptional amount of detail because every time you go to a different build, it, it changes just a little bit and commands change and it gets a little bit awkward in terms of when, when you're compiling. So th these are the versions of Mac, so 10.6, 7, and, and 8. And I don't think the Mac OS is very expensive if you're not in one of those uh, upgrade or, or upgrades anyway. Some of the, the, the bits in terms of the Linux and Unix of what we support currently which is cool and some of the bits we can do, so the classic add, remove, remove, you know, deploy Linux and Unix patches. Because you have to patch Linux and Unix, don't think you don't. You do do it. People say, we did see a Linux server running seven years out of date with no patches. <sighs> no, but you can't get viruses on Linux. Sorry, I say that in jest. <laughs> so, but to some of the bits and pieces we can't do, so we can't do everything uh, in terms of Unix and Linux. So. So no client UI experience for available applications at all. Uh, so you know if, if they are running a full-fledged Ubuntu desktop or something like that, where you're not going to get the same. No support for internet-based client management. And obviously Linux and Unix don't support on direct access, so we can't even include it in our direct access tunnel, just because they don't know what's good for them. Um, I'm already messing with it. Like, so, so there's a few things that we don't support. So, so it's just it's, it's a matter of uh, you have to, you know, th there's a certain amount of trade-offs. I think you'll, uh, hopefully you will agree. Oh, there's PowerShell as well. So, because like previously, and I don't know why they didn't bring it in 2012, but they had to wait <laughs> to service back one to bring PowerShell support in. So you can script to your heart's content and make things really, really quickly. Again, one of the things I will actually just, uh, it's one of the things in terms of even automation, which we'll talk about in two seconds, is that when you're writing your scripts and things like this, you write them as tools so they're reusable everywhere. You don't just write them as a unique script for that particular environment. Write them as a tool. Makes your life easier in the long run. So, <laughs> look good, worth investigating, yeah? 